what's good? Knicks Nation, Alex Terrace here, back again with another Geek Preview. We are previewing the New York Knicks at the Philadelphia 76ers. They're going to be playing in Philly at the Wells Fargo Center. And who better to join me than none other than John Gonzalez. You can find him over at CBS Sports covering the league at large. John, how are you doing, my man? How are you feeling today? Alex, thanks for having me. This is fun. Yeah, man. I'm excited to talk basketball with you. You're a Sixers fan. I'm happy that you got a Sixers jersey right behind you as I got my Knicks jersey behind you. So it, it evens the playing field. Sometimes it feels like uh, some of my guests have nothing in the background, and it's just like I'm staring at a blank wall. I like that you're showing your your Philly, your Philly true Philly pride. Yeah, I'm a Philly native, but as I mentioned to you uh, after you reached out, these are the two teams that I don't think I've ever enjoyed talking about. My team, because of obvious reasons, they've been largely disappointing for the last three decades or so and then your team because you guys are a new york team so uh we'll see how this goes so i see that you're an eagles fan thankfully i'm a jets fan all right so there's not too much all right we'll take there. that we'll take okay that. okay but I, I am a yankees fan though so i know that there's some uh, that's you also know, fine yeah it's i know i don't it's really fine, care about the yankees in the world mets, series a while back <laughs> yeah mets and giants are a pain and then the you know the knicks i mean uh we at least you're not a celtics fan let's put it that way uh, you know, funny enough, I do live in Boston. That's that. That's the that's the one thing. So I understand the pain of having to be around uh, Celtics fans and yeah. just sometimes the delusion of just saying, "Hey, we're always great. This is our year." And it's like you always fall short. So I think we can uh, we can find some ground on that. I lived in Boston for four years, and okay. uh, I ha some of my best friends are from Boston, and they are the absolute worst. <laughs> all everybody in Boston is awful. I. Uh, you know, my wife is a Bostonian, so I'll temper, I'll temper. With the one hatred. exception. With that One exception, caveat. exactly. Yeah. One exception. Yeah. But we're not here to talk about personal stories, even though I'm sure people will enjoy that. Let's get into this game. You know, mm -hmm. we got the Knicks facing off against the Sixers. Before I ask you about the Sixers, what have your thoughts been on the Knicks this year, though? I mean, that run that they went on before everybody got injured, and actually mm -hmm. after everybody was injured, Jalen Brunson was absolutely killing it. I mean, I've, I've watched him in a basically like a third of the Knicks team from Villanova uh, <laughs> from before they got into the league. And I never thought Brunson would be this good. He is a thousand times better than I ever anticipated. And I think like this Knicks team when healthy is legit, man. Now the question is, can they get healthy? Cause I just saw the, the news today about Julius Randall going, Hey, surgery still potentially on the table. OG the other day said, Hey, I hope to get back before the playoffs. And I'm like, yo, danger. But when they were all together and then after they go and get Bogdanovich and Burks at the deadline, two guys that I would have liked to see end up in Sixers uniforms. Mm. This is one of the better Knicks teams in recent memory. They're legit. I appreciate the kind words. And yeah, I mean, I would love to see everybody healthy. It's just the injury bug has been hurting the Knicks and you know, it's now just Brunson and the, the band of Villanova boys. Yep. Thankfully we're, it seems like we're going to have Dante back Hartenstein back. Uh, it seems like Bogdanovich will be returning as well. Maybe Mitchell Robinson returns this season maybe. too. That's that's another maybe, but OG, Mitch, Randall are the big question marks. And hopefully, you know, with everybody back, the question is, especially for Randall, will he still have that same aggressiveness, you know, attacking the paint that he did at the beginning of this year? But everything is a TBD, man. When this team was this team was rolling, I think, you know, after the after RJ and quickly got traded, it all made sense why. You trade for OG Ananobi, one of the best mm -hmm. perimeter defenders, switchable defenders. He can knock down the three when open, something that RJ couldn't do. But then you just see, like, we're starting to see a glimpse of his offense when he was running with that second unit. But then, as you noted, everything goes to waste with everyone getting injured. So it's all like, what could be? And hopefully we get to see it before the playoffs. But the Sixers are dealing with some injuries, too, with Joel Embiid. I know you got Covington, who's currently listed as out. Batum is a game time decision. The Anthony Melton is considered out. What's mm -hmm. been the status of the 76ers right now? Because he got the injury bug too. The uh the status of the Sixers, twas ever thus, is uh broken. Mm. Broken and disappointing. You know, this year, like I was saying, watching the Knicks from afar after they traded RJ, because I was never an RJ guy. Mm. And I was like, good, I get it. Like you should trade him. OG's perfect for that team. He's perfect for Tibbs. You can run him into the ground, and Tibbs de definitely did. The new all dang. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh man, this this team's good. From from a Sixers perspective, after last year, to give you like an, a, a little glimpse into like um, our always our always impacted like mindset. After last year, when they lost to the Celtics in Game Seven, they should have won Game Six at home. They didn't. Then they no showed in Game Seven. I was like, that's it. 
I've had enough. I'm taking a mental break from this team. I'm taking a year off. I'm going to watch the rest of the NBA. I'm not going to pay attention. Then they trade James Harden. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. Can I curse on this? I don't know. I'm it's like, a family I'm, show. It's a family show. <laughs> you son of a gun. I'm back in. <laughs> I was like, they moved James Harden. And I was like, so excited about this team. Maxi takes the leap. He's the one, a to Embiid. Embiid is having an, an historic season. Looks like he's on pace for a second MVP. Again, was, was doing really something that had never been done before. Will Chamberlain, where you're scoring more than a point per minute. And I was like fully invested again. And then everybody got hurt, including Joel Embiid and the wheels came off. So um, what's the status? The status is, we're all idiots for believing in the first place. Mm, wow. You know, yeah. I look, I'm a believer in the Sixers when Embiid's healthy. Do you know, like, yeah. if, when he's going to be coming back? Is he back? Because, like, he's not even listed on the injury report right now. I don't know if that's, like, a a, 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 a fault on ESPN or anything of that nature. What's what's going on with him? So the latest that, that I heard was the latest that everybody else heard, which is that he had surgery and they're going to reevaluate him and that they hope to get him back for the playoffs. Now, they're six and 14 without him this year. So what kind of team would he be coming back to? And this is something that I've said on CVS sports at nauseum that if there's, if they're in the plan, it's probably shut down city for the rest of the year, because what are you coming back to? You got to play your way. It's not the Miami heat team that all of a sudden you think that they're going to catch fire in the playoffs, play their way in out of the play in, get into the regular postseason, really go on a run get through, you know, the gauntlet of the East beyond the Celtics, then have to get through the Celtics, then get to the final. I just don't see it. Mm. If they are, however, in the regular playoffs, when he's potentially ready to come back, now it's a conversation, but he's the franchise and you don't want to rush it, right? I mean, this is like really dicey stuff. If he gets hurt again, he's already got a long injury history. You don't want to compound things. So it's a mess is what it is. Mm. So you think they would shut him down just if they're in playing? So- Interesting, because couldn't you argue the same thing if they were in the playoffs too, where, you know, depending on seeding, who you got to go against, don't you want to have him healthy for the following season? But at the same time, like, I can also understand, I'm, I know I'm just like having a internal conversation with myself right now. Sure. You could say, hey, we next year's never promised. So we may want to see how far we can get now. I, th I think 100% that that's on the table, right? I mean, if you're Daryl Morey and the Sixers, you look at it and go, we don't want to waste a season of Embiid, right? We don't want to waste a shot where, aside from the Celtics, the East is up for grabs, right? I mean, like the mm -hmm. Celtics have been, no doubt about it, not just the best team in the East, but the best team in the entire NBA all season long, certainly the most consistent. Mm -hmm. But somebody's going to have to play them in the finals of the conference, right? Right. And the Cavs have been really good this year. The Bucks under Doc Rivers have completely fallen apart. Your Knicks are hurt. The Sixers are hurt. The Pacers... You know, I like what they did in acquiring Pascal Siakam, but jury's still out there and on and on and on, right? So when you put the Celtics aside, if you put everybody from the Cavs down through the last team in the play-in, the Hawks, let's say, mm -hmm. you put them in a grab bag and you pick out a name. If you told me that's the team that's going to play the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals, I'd go, okay, I believe you. So mm -hmm. if that's the way they go, I get it. I'm just saying from my perspective, and I have no inside information here, you got to be careful. He's Joel Embiid. And you see how much different they are when he's out there and healthy. They're a legitimate contender with him and they're not without him. So then Maxie's not the guy that could keep this team afloat without Embiid. I love Maxie. I think that he's, for me, the most, I don't have a vote. If I did, he'd be the most improved player this year. Mm -hmm. I, I think that him making the all-star was well-deserved. But we've seen it. Like I said, 6-14 and 14 without Joel Embiid this year. Completely different team. There's only so much that Maxi can do. Yeah, I, I like the leap that he's taken this season. He's been phenomenal. And I just feel like... I feel like it's also due to the other injuries on this team, too, where if you had guys like Melton healthy, like maybe there's enough... Like what will I see with the Knicks? Like with Brunson? Like you don't have Randall, who's the clear-cut second-best scorer on the team... Dante he certainly had a stretch, but it's like there's a little bit. I, I see that same Moxie in Maxie where he could be like that guy where it's like, hey, it's me. I can figure it out. We can hold this team afloat until MB gets back. I know it's has been great to start off with, but it's been it's a massive adjustment too to not have Joel Embiid for Maxie, who's 
you know, been thrusted into being that second star. I feel like if you give him a little bit of time, maybe it can happen. I don't know what the, what the schedule looks like for the Sixers, but maybe it does lighten up where it's like, hey, you know what? You play the Horns X amount of times, and that's a team that we can just, you know, bully and get some easy wins right there. I mean, when they're healthy, right? When Embiid is out there, Embiid has Maxi as his, like, running mate, right? As his, mm-hmm. like, 1A. When Embiid is not there and Maxi has to step into that leading role, who does Maxi have as his 1A? I mean, Tobias Harris has been better this year, but that's a really low bar, right? And then they go mm-hmm. out and they they acquire, you know, Robert Covington, who hasn't played that much. The Anthony Melton's been hurt. Nicholas Batum has been a nice glue guy. Um, I mean, Buddy Heald, they have Buddy Heald now, and he's been really good mm-hmm. for them, but it hasn't translated in that very, very small sample size to a team that looks like it can really win games. We'll see. Um I don't know. I, I just think it's a lot to ask for Maxi after he goes last year from being the third option to this year being the second option. And now you're like, yo, can you put the entire team on your back? It's a lot. <laughs> for sure. It's a lot. Absolutely. Um, but hey, sometimes, you know, I feel like this is like good opportunities for him to even grow to be that guy because I, I feel like in the future, you're always there's you can always pencil in and be to miss like somewhere between 15 to 20 games every year. Yeah. So it's like a good. I don't know, it's like that good, I don't know, if you work at a corporate setting, you know, it's say, hey, work on this side project. This is the promotion we're going to give you, like, if you could do X, Y, and Z. And I feel like for Maxi, that's kind of what he's got right now in that to that degree. Yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity to learn. I think that going forward, it probably helps him in, in the growth process, right? Like, let's see what he can do. Earlier in the season, I don't know if you remember this, like, he, he had, like, 20 something and 10. It was a double double super early in the season. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, like everybody else was like, wow, that's a really great game from Maxi. I mean, look at him really growing into that one, a role alongside Embiid. And Nick nurse was like, not enough, need more from him. And I was like, that's crazy. And now we're at a point where you look at it and you go, he's right. Not enough. We need more <laughs> from him. And it's like, I don't know if the kid can deliver. He's so young. He's way ahead of the curve. He's already exceeded expectations on my end, but the expectations keep changing right the goalposts keep moving for him like he this year was like oh can you be the robin to Embiid's batman and now it's like can you be superman i'm not a big fan of superman and and dc comics in general that might have been a bad analogy but it's you get the idea the idea is like you got to be the man and i guess we'll see I only like the Flash from DC. That's like my favorite, one of my favorite superheroes. But I, yeah. I agree with you. I mean, especially when you have the run of DC movies that have just been utter garbage. I, I understand. Yeah, it's it's god awful. But I don't want to put that bad juju on him. No, nah, I feel I feel you on that. But you know, this is where I see the similarities between the Knicks and the Sixers, where it's like you both deal with injuries. You're talking about two critical players, especially in the front court position. You know, between Randall and Bede, and now you're asking your guards to be that catalyst for it, and. I think like when I like the comparison between the Knicks and the Sixers in this is that I look at the future for these two teams, right? And if they both can maintain where they are right now, because I think they're both slated to be fourth and fifth in the standings. I think they're both, if the season we're in right now, they're both fourth and fifth, Knicks, then uh, Sixers. I feel like these teams are like, it's almost like a good showing of like what could potentially be in the playoffs to a certain degree, because I know it's not both a full healthy roster, but it's still like, you know what? We're still going to get somewhat of an idea of, hey, this is like between especially Maxi and Brunson, like what, what, how they're going to duke it out, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's been two different seasons for both teams, right? I mean, early on in the, especially when you guys went on that run and you were like half a game out of second place, I was like, wow, you know, sky's the limit for this team. And then, there was all these injuries, and then you started to fall back to the pack a little bit. Cavs were just healthy and consistent for much of the year. They got Evan Mobley back, and they're just playing well, right? Mm-hmm. But I think like if the Sixers and the Knicks were both healthy, I'd probably like them better than the Cavs. I don't know what to make of the Bucks. The Bucks don't know what to make of the Bucks. They were I don't know what to make of the Bucks. Thirty-one I think... and ten, and then they fired their head coach, and it never happened except for when David Blaine got fired. And <laughs> Uh, David Blatt, sorry, not David, David Blatt. Blatt. No, I, I was thinking about uh, magic magician. after you said that. Like, can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> David Blatt. But, like, I, I I like the Knicks and the Sixers better than those teams if they're right. healthy. But the problem is, you know, Sixers have not been able to stay healthy and neither of the Knicks. Do you think that this is a potential matchup, though, in the playoffs? Four and five right here. I feel like, like the Pacers are good. 
I just don't trust that defense enough to say that they can take that next step. Like I could see them being a playoff team, staying around six. Maybe they get up to five. Maybe it's like a jockeying between all three teams, between the Knicks, Sixers, and Pacers. But I just feel like these two teams are on a co collision course for the playoffs. I don't see I, – I know that it looks bad for the Sixers right now, but I feel like you look at Miami, Butler's missing time because he's away for, for a bit due to family issues. Orlando, they're a very young team, not really good shooting team. I feel like you can stop them. I know they play very physical. I don't believe in the Bulls, and I definitely don't believe in the Hawks. So I look at between four, five, and six. I know it could be all jumping from two down to eight, but I feel like it just, to me, it just seems like the Knicks and the Sixers are on a collision course for this playoffs. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you have more faith in the Sixers than I do. They only have, <laughs> what, a two-and-a-half game lead on that play-in spot for the Heat, so like... I don't know. I, I, I'm i dubious, skeptical, concerned, pick your adjective here, uh, that they can keep their head above water until Embiid comes back, if he even comes back. Uh, I like your chances better because I think, you know, absent OG and Julius Randle, you know, like who knows what happens with Mitchell Robinson. Hartenstein's been really good. You mentioned Dante DiVincenzo earlier. He's playing like Michael Jordan for a stretch there. Like he was putting up crazy numbers and mm -hmm. I, like, I love Dante, uh, the villain, despite the fact that I went to a different big five school in Philadelphia and we've been trained to hate Villanova. I like that Villanova triumvirate. They've been really good this year. So, I mean, I hate to say this, it makes me feel awful as a Philadelphian, but if you had me pick which team I like better going forward as currently constituted and with like the potential to get guys healthy, I think you guys are in a better spot. Once again, salute to Knicks Nation. Thank you all for tuning in for another Game of the Week preview. With me on the other side is none other than John Gonzalez. He, co he covers the league at large for CBS Sports. Make sure to support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match. And also make sure to check out KnicksFanTV.com for some of our great written content. Okay, John. So we, we covered the storylines. All right, let's get into this game. Let's, let's talk about some key stats okay. for this matchup because... I know you don't have faith in your Sixers. I'm going to have the faith for you because I feel like this isn't going to be a collision. Oh, that's a mistake. <laughs> what a rookie. What a rookie mistake. Ah, you got to spend more time around this team. And then you'll stop believing. Go ahead. Let me hear it. Hey, man, look, I, I've been a Knicks fan for all my life. So mm -hmm. I know what to believe and not believe. So trust me. And I'm also a Jets fan. So I know right, I, fair enough. I, I try not to. I tr always try to go into it like, yeah, maybe it could be this year. I made the mistake yeah. this year. I thought Aaron Rodgers was going to do it. And then. We all know what happens. Oh, tough start. Yeah, tough start indeed. Four snaps and then there she wrote it. But that hey. Was it. But look, we'll go and talk about the Sixers. This team, even with their injuries, they're still a top team in getting steals. They're a top team in scoring off of turnovers. They're eighth. And when I look at this game between both the Knicks and the Sixers and both teams being injury riddled, I feel like this is an opportunity for the Sixers to to get a win because they can they can just get out there and transition. I mean, Maxi is just a blur. He can cause turnovers. He's excellent at that. The Knicks are good at preventing turn at stopping opponents from getting out there uh and scoring off of turnovers. But they're 18th when it comes to fast break points. So I feel like for the Sixers, this is a chance for them to get out there and take an advantage on the Knicks. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, maybe. I mean, certainly you're right about Maxi. He loves to push it. He is a blur. He's super fun to watch. Uh, his transition game is incredible. I don't think that there's anybody in the lead that can really stop ball when he has it on the fly. Uh, and Buddy Heald has been really good since they brought him over from Indiana. That was a nice little addition for them. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly they needed just like warm bodies to get out on the court. Like previously, <laughs> seriously, I mean, previously before he came in for like the cavalry and the reinforcements, it was like, Tyrese Maxey and and Tobias Harris and like three guys from the South Philly Y that they were rolling out there. South. So like being able to like just bring in Buddy Heald for reinforcements, which was nice. Um, toss up for me. Toss up for me on this game. Toss up for me uh, between the two of them just because of the injuries. It's hard to know what this team is like in a limited sample size um, with the guys they have now. So I just keep coming back to Six and fourteen without Joel Embiid. It's like it's just such a different. It's just such a different team without him. Like you put them in there, they can beat anybody. You take them out, they could lose to anybody. I hear, I hear you, and I feel the same way with the Knicks. That's why I'm like, I don't know where to look at this game with all these injuries because yeah. they went on a hot, they went on that nine game winning streak, and then it's 
You know, they're so up and down, especially when you're losing players. I mean, it was Brunson and Dante being your two leading scorers, and then you lose Dante due to a hamstring injury. And next thing I know, I'm like watching Brunson trying to do his best just to keep this team in games. And then it's like, it's struggle. It's a struggle. It's truly a struggle when you don't have enough out there. And I don't know what this team's going to look like tomorrow. And neither do you for for the Sixers, I guess. Um, but 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 you guys will have whoever's available. You, as long as Jalen Brunson's out there, you're going to have the best player on the floor. I appreciate that. That's better than what Kenny the Jet Smith would say in, in past or anybody else or even Candace Parker. So I appreciate you giving kudos to Jalen Brunson. He's amazing. I mean, like you got nobody. I, I'm not even sure that Papa Brunson thought he would be this good in New York, but the the Mavs have to be absolutely kicking themselves. And the Knicks, like, you know, you guys caught heat when you signed him. And a lot of people thought it was an overpay. In retrospect, what a gross underpay. Like, what a value contract that is. He is having an incredible season. He had a great season last year, too. Um, but this year, it's really like he went from star to superstar. So, yeah, I mean, most games, he's going to be the best player on the floor. I agree with that. It's just even when, like, I can go back to the last couple of games for the Knicks, right? And even though he was the best player on the on the floor, like, even against the Orlando Magic, it's just tough to think, like, all right, how do we win because we need somebody else out there to go score with them? I mean, Knicks lost to the Magic 118 to 100. They lost to the Rockets on a terrible last minute foul call, 105 mm -hmm. to 103. You they guys haven't let that go yet, though, right? No, I have not <laughs> let that go. I want, I, I, Look, I don't know how to pronounce that guy's last name. Gobwe, 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 what? It, it's gobble to me because that's a turkey call, all right? And then nice. you have then you have Pacers, who we lost to, and the Mazda we lost to. And this is just the – this for as great as Brunson is, it's everybody else too. Like if we had Dante out – if we have Dante out there, I'll feel a little bit more comfortable because he's been shooting well. Yes. But if we don't have Dante and it's just Brunson, this is a toss-up between both teams. You're playing McBride – 35 minutes hoping for the know. best. I like I McBride. Mean, He's actually improved this year, but yeah. I still, if, I'm still just like, here's the, what I wanted to ask you about this. So like, sure. You know, the other, before the break going coming into the break, Tibbs had to play McBride like 32 minutes, I think in that last game. Cause there was just like nobody available. Right. Right. And I was talking to my other, the other people that I do basketball uh, programming with at CBS sports. And we're like talking about, when everybody's healthy, right? Because you go out and get Bogdanovich and Burks and you're like, oh, wow. Like now all of a sudden, you know, if if uh, Mitchell Robinson comes back and Julius Randle comes back and OG comes back, you're taking like two of Precious, Josh Hart and Dante and moving them to the bench. Like you can't have six starters, right? So now all of a sudden the Knicks would be in theory when healthy, a really deep team, like mm -hmm. could go potentially nine or 10 deep, which brings me to the question, which is, Tibbs will never play nine or 10 guys. If he, I've made this joke a million times. If he could play four guys, he would do that. It would be like Hoosiers, Gene Hackman and Hoosiers would be like, my team's <laughs> out there. So like, is it good to have that many players? Just for, I guess for health and redundancy purposes, it is, but Tibbs would never go that deep, especially not in the playoffs. Like playoffs, he's going six and seven deep and that's the end of it. And this, the thing is like, he did go nine deep last year, but even the nine deep that he, that he went with, it was, he saw top and get like 10 minutes unless Randall was out for a game. You saw Grimes get a few minutes quickly. Didn't get that many minutes because he just was not the same guy that we saw during the regular season. I still go with the fact that uh, whoever the six guys are, which to me, it would be the starting five. I don't necessarily think Mitch gets back into that starting rotation just due to health concerns. I think right. you can't bring him and off also Hartenstein's stuff. been good. He's been awesome, and he really opens up the offense. Like he's the more he's the more well rounded he's center. He's more yeah. well rounded. Yeah, yeah, and he could play the high post. He could find guys cutting, and especially when you have great cutters like Dante and OG, it just opens it everything else up for Randall and Brunson. But it's those five guys: Brunson, Dante, Randall, OG, Hartenstein, and then Josh Hart coming off the bench. And then if Mitchell Robinson's back, he's going to be in there too because of rim protection. Eighth guy. Burks because did Burks you mention Bodie? Been there. Did you make a, mention Bogdanovich? I see. I don't know if he actually makes that. I think he'll be like that ninth guy. I'd rather have Bogdanovich for shooting than Burks, but okay. I think I think the the logic would be who can create in isolation, and Burks in the past has done that for the Knicks and knows the system. Um, I point. understand the Bogdanovich for three point shooting. That's where it just gets muddy at this point because. Yeah. Even with McBride, you can argue that defense and his three-point shooting has been better, so he should get minutes. Precious could be a good back and forth. He's been doing that right now, and it's just 
to your point, when you have a lot of guys, this is the this is the issue when everyone's healthy. And this is where like you see, like even with those guys that I mentioned, though, you see how limited they are without Dante and Brunson. So that's why even in tomorrow's matchup, I'm like, I have no idea which way this game this game could go any direction possible. It could be the Sixers with a 20 point lead and the Knicks come back and make it and, and take the win or vice versa. But mm -hmm. I just, if it's just a Maxi and Brunson show tomorrow, it can go either way, in my opinion, which would be fun. I mean, it could very well be the Maxi and Brunson show tomorrow. So uh, from the Sixers perspective, I mean, you know, it's Maxi and healed. And then you cross your fingers after that. Um, from from your perspective, yeah, it's probably Jalen Brunson and you cross your fingers after that, unless, you know, Dante and some of those guys are available, but um, could could produce some fireworks. We'll see. I mean, sometimes those games are fun. For sure. But that's why tomorrow's matchup, my key matchup is Brunson versus Tyreek Maxi. I mean, Brunson, as you mentioned, has taken his leap to superstardom this year. Just the way he can just manage the game, take over a game. He's clutch in the fourth with five minutes or less. That's just what he does this year. He's just been phenomenal. And you just saw it even when Randall went down. The Knicks were still able to go on that nine-game winning streak. And then you look at Maxi and just how he's just transcended for being, as you know, that third option, second option. I still say give him time. He'll, show, he'll surprise you with some first option material while Embiid's out. But... With Maxi this year, man, it's just been the playmaking is just on another level. The scoring has just taken a jump. I mean, prior to him coming out to college, it's like, could this guy be a consistent three point shooter? He's improved in that. And he's yeah. just so dynamic as a guard. And between both of these guys tomorrow, I know they're not going to be guarding each other, but just how they're going to be running the offense and getting everybody into the in position and just taking over when needed, that's what I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, both teams have found their point guards, right? I mean, the Sixers mm -hmm. were messing around with James Harden and thought that that could be a pairing that would work for the future and and didn't realize until, uh, you know, shipping them out to L.A. that they already had the guy in-house and they drafted him in the, tw in the 20s and stumbled into this, like, revelation, really, he's become. So that's great. And then, as we mentioned, for the Knicks, I mean, you guys go and, like, it's not a league really anymore where, like, big time players move in free agency mm -hmm. it, it doesn't happen as much because generally their teams like to lock them down. And then if a superstar isn't happy, they force their way to a different team. So for you guys to go and like, just find Jalen Brunson on a Mavs team that could definitely use him right now. And then you're like, nah, we'll take them. Even though you guys think we're overpaying for him. I mean, like, like what an incredible job. How is it possible that the New York Knicks, that was one of the most dysfunctional organizations in basketball for decades, all of a sudden is now universally lauded as like just making smart moves and like, like being competent, like over at the trade deadline, they go and get two guys again that I wanted the Sixers to land. One of them didn't get either of them. Both go to New York, Bogdanovich and Burks. And you don't have to give up a first, just a couple of seconds, you bolster your team, you built around the margins, you you move on from RJ Barrett and you bring in a guy like OG. I mean, like a really competent organization. It kind of is bothering me, to be honest with you. <laughs> I am so happy. And shout out to Leon Rose, Worldwide mm -hmm. West and that crew, because they've truly, you know, Rome wasn't built in the day. Second year under their tenure, it was a little questionable, especially when you have Point Burks. I don't know if you... Uh, are caught wind of like Nick's Twitter during that time, or just yeah. Nick's fan base in general. It's like, what is Tibbs doing with Alec Burks at the point guard position? Please stop. Give Emmanuel quickly this opportunity. Can he yeah. be something? But then, Hey, you turn it around next year. I mean, you had that, like not, you had that eight game winning streak last season after mm -hmm. the nine man rotation change. And look, Tibbs has just found the recipe and he did it again this year, and, but you got to shout out to the front office that you said for getting the guys that he needs. And, is there any other coach? I have to I have to stop you for this. Is there any other coach that you hear like, oh, that's a Tibbs guy. That's a Tibbs guy. That's a Tibbs guy. Like who else in the league do, does gets that moniker? I mean, I'm sure that there's like guys that fit into like it's less about Spo, even though Spo for my money is the best coach in the NBA, and mm -hmm. more about like heat culture. But I hear what you're saying. Like, there's a type of player that uh is associated with Tom Tibbet, and generally it's the type of player who can uh, play way too many minutes every single night and like just not want to get traded to a team that will let him rest. Uh, like that's why I, I'm so excited, less excited in terms of like the prospects about you guys winning and more excited about if you do get healthy just to see Tibbs noodle over. What do I do with this many people? 
you know, instead of being like, well, those are my six guys that I'm going to run into the ground. Oh man. I I'm just, not looking forward I to that. I would love to see him like the calculations on the back of the napkin where he's I'm like, not looking forward to that. Not at all. Because there were like games last year. Uh, I, this is, there were games last year, especially against the heat where it's like, I know Quentin Grimes was dealing with a shoulder injury, but having Josh out hard out there in the starting row lineup with Randall, not the greatest three point shooter. He was okay last year. You then have, what was this Hart, RJ, then Mitchell Robinson. It's like you have four guys out of five. that aren't good three point shooters. And then yeah. everyone's just cutting the court, like shrinking the court because, Hey, we, we will dare you to shoot. And only Brunson was the guy who's like, I can handle this. And that's where you see, like, you need another guy for as great as Brunson is. Like, I know you need another guy, but it's this is where it's like once again it goes back to, to for you know tomorrow's game. Like, w- what is going to happen? I just need to know. I need to know after this long break. But getting close to wrapping this up, John. And salute to Knicks Nation. Thank you all for tuning in for another game of the week preview. Make sure to use that promo code KFTV to get up to a one hundred one hundred dollar match for Underdog Fantasy. Make sure to tap into John Gonzalez over at CBS, CBS Sports as well, covering the league at large. Who's your X factor? Who's your X factor for tomorrow's game? Because for me, it's Josh Hart. I think if there's no Dante DiVincenzo, I'm looking at the guy who can get out and transition and score. And I'm looking at the Sixers, you know, whack thereof depth. And I feel like this is just a perfect game for Josh Hart to go bully mode, attack out and transition, be just like the ball hawk that he is on defense, like a free safety. Mm-hmm. pause steals get out you know he's been doing a solid job finding guys uh while attacking two in the half court since he's been asked to play more minutes i feel like that's going to be this is going to be his type of game who would it be for the sixers yeah josh hart's a good one for the next i mean i'm a big josh hart fan as i mentioned going back to the nova days uh, uh he's just one of those guys that you can plug in he fits a lot of different styles you know he has mentioned I always love when the deadline comes around like this past one. He's like, this is maybe one of the first deadlines since I've been in the league where I haven't been mentioned right. in trade rumors because he there's he just fits or would fit with a lot of teams, right? Like a lot of teams would like to have a Josh Hart. The Sixers would love to have a Josh Hart. Um, but from the per- Sixers percep- perspective, I, I think it's probably the new guy. It's probably Buddy Heald, right? I mean, Buddy like, Heald. what can you squeeze out of Buddy Heald? Uh, how much can he help shoulder the load for Tyrese Maxey? You know, we saw some some really good games from him after he came over from Indiana. Didn't translate all the time into wins. Now they got to figure out, can those two guys play winning basketball together without Joel Embiid and like really keep this thing afloat? Like even staying around 500 and staying out of that play-in would be a huge win for them. Uh, and this is one of those games where, as we've belabored on this pod, like could go either way and both teams need it, right? Like your Sixers are at home though, so... Uh, getting something big out of Buddy Heald and squeezing a win against a division rival that's ahead of you in the standings would be huge. For sure. Both teams need it just to keep it yeah. pace in this tight standings. I mean, my goodness. He's just fun this year. It is really fun. And it's not, it's not like, because in the years past, when I think about the Isaiah Thomas Celtics, right? It's like, all right, so you have the LeBron Cavs, the Celtics, the DeMar DeRozan, Kyle Lowry Raptors. And it's like, we all know it's the Cavs, right? It's, it's like, yeah, I know we have the Celtics that are clear cut, but the difference is I would, I can trust LeBron to make it all the way. The Celtics, they're a team that yep. like, oh, it seems great right now. And then they could just implode any, at yeah. any moment. They haven't done it. Right? And, yeah. And, and I hope they implode again, like to all my friends uh, in Boston who are Celtics fans, I, I wish you nothing but ill. I hope it goes terribly <laughs> for you. Um, the Celtics have been, the best team in the NBA all season long. That first six for them is hands down the fir- the best first six in the NBA. They're so deep, right? But yeah. as Missoula has said himself, they haven't won one since 08, right? Like they've gotten close. They've been really good. They've been on the cusp, but they haven't actually done it. Jason Tatum was talking the other day about how he wants to be uh, seen as the next face of the NBA, right? After LeBron and Curry move on, he wants to be in the mix for multiple MVPs, wants to win multiple championships. And he could be, he could be that guy, but he hasn't been yet, which is why I'm with you. Uh, like the East, like I, I think they're still the favorites. The Celtics are still the favorites if you're going to bet on them. But if any of these other teams in that grab bag that we mentioned in the Eastern Conference beat them and sent them home on an early vacation again, wouldn't surprise me. Would not surprise me at all either. Um, and I just don't know who because playoffs are different. 
the East right now, it's all jumbled. Everyone's dealing with like their own issues. Even the Cavs for the run that they went on, it was just Jared Allen and Donovan Mitchell. You didn't even have Garland or, or Evan yeah. Mobley. So it's, and I don't trust the Bucks defense at all. Uh, that team is just, it's too funky for me to. I mean, it's gotten better to, under Doc. He, over the, despite the fact that they're three and seven with him, the defense has improved. The problem is that the offense fell off. So they had yeah. a good offense that was cooking and an awful defense. And then Doc came in and now the defense is better, but the offense has come apart. And yes, they were missing uh, Dame in there and they were missing Chris Middleton in there. But now you got Doc like chirping to everybody who will listen about a million different things. And just like the vibes are so bad with that team. So I'm with you. I'm, I'm not sold on the Bucks. Yeah. I mean, you have, and I've seen you tweet about this. You have Doc out there just bad. I <laughs> think the front office and everything that's Amazing. going on. It's like, what is happening, man? You talk about how you didn't want to take Adrian Griffin's job, which is like, wait, I, I don't believe any of that at all. I, to be honest. I mean, like you took a consulting job with this team and then I don't know that, it just reeks of just nasty. I just work to wanted me. to, you know, for anybody who's in Milwaukee who's watching this Knicks podcast now, I just want to say, I'm sorry. I know where you guys are. You know, Godspeed. Good luck. You know. Well, let me ask You're, you because you saw Doc as a as a Sixers coach. Are you happier with Nurse over Doc? Oh, a million times. I mean, look, it's two different things. If you're asking me, as somebody who's watched the Sixers my entire life as, you know, a fan of Philadelphia sports, absolutely 1000% rather have Nick nurse. If you're asking me as a media member, man, doc is good copy. Like he's good content, right? Like now he's Milwaukee's problem. And I still get the content as a national media member and I can just watch it from afar. But if I were like still covering a specific team, he's, I mean, there's always something to talk about with doc. Right. So, sure. but I, I want to say, I am, I am very glad that he's Milwaukee's problem now. <laughs> and there you have it everybody there you have it john appreciate you coming through and talking and previewing this game and talking basketball in general with me please let the listeners know where they can find you if you got any upcoming work we should be on the lookout for yeah you can find us at uh cbs sports uh cbs sports.com cbs sports hq you can find me on twitter i'm not going to call it the other thing because it's ridiculous uh at john gonzalez it's just my name uh and yeah we've got all the basketball content you can handle. This is fun, man. Uh, I would wish you luck, but I'm not going to because you're a New Yorker and a Knicks fan. But I wish you well. Let's say uh, you I, personally, I wish you well. Not I, I, the, the feelings are, are mutual there, John. Okay. Uh, so I, I hear you. But I just do, I do have one question because I, I am not adept in uh, Philly language. What is a John? Because I know that's your twi that's your Twitter name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so. A John is like, it's very funny that you asked me this because sometimes like I'll go on with other people, especially the Canadians, it confuses them. And they'll think my name is actually John, J-A-W-N, when it's John, J-O-H-N. Mm -hmm. But a John in Philly is like, it can be a person, it could be a place, it could be a thing. Like I could be like, oh, you see that John behind me? And I'm talking about the Jersey or, hey, have you tried that John? It could be like a drink or a sandwich or uh, you see that John walking across the street? It could be some somebody. So it's like... Uh, it's a noun. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. I just see I you just guys see can't use it because I, last time I was in Philly, which was for a Jets Eagles game, where I got to see. Want well, to tell me this is how bad my luck is? I was expecting Sam Darnold that year. I got Luke Falk, and that 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 was just terrible. It was so bad. Eagles fans, even though the Eagles were just demolishing the Jets that day because Luke Falk couldn't throw further than ten yards, they were giving us pity boos. So I'm just like, now you're giving me pity boos? This is yeah. I don't even know what's worse at this point. Like they're like, oh boo, and I'm like. I need to get out of here. This yeah, is just... we're, uh, we're the worst, but yeah. also the best at being the worst. So I, I enjoy it. But uh, this was fun, man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Anytime. And salute to Knicks Nation for tuning in for another Game of the Week preview. Make sure to share, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make sure make sure to support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match. Also, make sure to go support our website, KnicksFanTV.com. Go catch some of the great articles over there as well. And hey, you already know what's going to happen. We got JD on the mic doing play-by-play, -play, so make sure to tap in for that as well, and we'll catch you for post-game two. Salute to Knicks Nation. We'll catch you later. We out.